Today, great espresso is way more accessible than it was even just a few years ago. A simple lever machine coupled with a good hand grinder has the potential to rival shots pulled with equipment worth several thousand pounds. And that is just so exciting, right? It just takes good technique and a little bit of practice. So today, we're gonna to show you our workflow and how we manage to consistently and efficiently pull mouth-watering shots of this elixir that we call espresso. A real espresso is brewed by forcing water at high temperatures through a compacted puck of finely ground coffee capable of offering enough resistance to create six to nine bars of pressure. Today, we're gonna to be breaking down what we do at each step and why we do it. So whether you're just getting started or a seasoned hobbyist, this video should have plenty of information, tips, and tricks. I mean, espresso is unlike any other brewing method where micro adjustments like dosing 0.5 grams more or grinding just 15 microns finer can have a massive impact on the taste of the resulting shot. It is a paradise for the tinkering geek, but can very quickly get very frustrating. So we're here to structure the process and make it a fun and rewarding ritual that you look forward to every day. As you probably already know, we love the idea of slowing down and savoring the ritual of brewing. We genuinely enjoy the process as much as we do the cup, so it isn't surprising that our setup is fully manual. And there are several pros to going this route. Firstly, you can fully immerse yourself and have the satisfaction of having created something yourself. Secondly, a manual lever machine like the Flare gives you a lot of control, the kind of control you'd have to drop some serious dough for on an electric machine. Features like pre-infusion, pressure profiling, and instant tactile feedback, to name a few. And lastly, barrier to entry. It is a lot more accessible with not much compromise. While we will be brewing with the Flare Pro 2 today, most of these concepts will translate to other similar brewers that offer control over parameters like pre-infusion and pressure. Anyway, enough with the buildup. Let's get started. So here's what you're gonna need to follow along today. Firstly, you're gonna need a manual lever machine like the Flare or the Cafe Lart Robot. Accurate scales that go down to 0.1 grams, a good grinder that's capable of producing espresso fine grounds, and this is critical. No amount of preheating, puck prep, or tamping is gonna help if your grinder is incapable of producing even fine grounds. You'll need a WDT tool, which is nothing but four or five acupuncture needles, roughly 0.3 to 0.4 mm thick, stuck on a handle, which is made out of cork or wood, and to be honest, it's super simple to make one yourselves, like the one that we've made. You'll need a kettle to heat water and some way to prop the brew chamber and the portafilter basket onto the kettle opening for steam preheating. A silicone funnel or kitchen sink strainer work well and are really inexpensive. And as for the recipe, we're gonna be brewing 18 grams of coffee, ideally two weeks off roast. And we strongly encourage you to start with medium roasts from a good roaster and once you're consistently pulling good shots with that, then you can move to light and ultra light roasts, which are a lot more challenging to extract well. We'll need boiling hot water. Lastly, you'll need about 15 minutes to get to that first sip, but it's not all about the end result, right? Immerse yourself, engage all your senses and enjoy the process. It can truly slow down time. And as we like to say here at Aramse, ritualize your brew. So before we get started brewing, let's get a little bit of theory out of the way. While there are several variables that affect espresso brewing, the main ones would be dose, yield, grind size, temperature, and pressure. And the process of dialing in is changing one or more of these variables in a systematic way, one at a time, to arrive at the perfect recipe for a given coffee. As this is more of a foundational video, we'll only be playing with two of the variables today, which is grind size and pressure while the others remain fixed. We'll be using a dose of 18 grams of coffee to yield 36 grams of espresso. Now, temperature stability is extremely important when it comes to brewing espresso. And with a brewer like this, which has no electrical heating element, preheating becomes very, very important. It's hard to measure brew temperature accurately with a device like this. So what we're gonna do is try and get everything as hot as possible. That way we have the option of catching the temperature that we want on its way down. So let's start brewing. 
First, fire up the kettle and place the portafilter basket and the brew chamber on top of it using something like a kitchen sink strainer. Next, weigh out your beans and then place the scales under the flare so it's ready to go. Use a tiny mirror that's positioned upwards so you can see the bottomless portafilter when you're brewing. This will provide invaluable visual cues as to how things are going and will also help you troubleshoot as you will see later on in this video. Use the Ross Droplet Technique or RDT to eliminate static and then grind your beans. Now once your kettle's been boiling for a few minutes, take just the basket out but leave the brew chamber in place. You can even cover it with a cup or a bowl and this makes preheating quicker and more efficient. Wipe the basket dry and load it up with the ground coffee. Use a WDT tool to evenly distribute the grounds. Now this step is critical, so take your time and get the bed as flat and even as possible. It'll minimize or even eliminate channeling and result in a much more even extraction. Just this one step can truly elevate your espresso game. Once you're done, give the basket one firm tap on the counter and make sure it's as vertical as possible. Then deliver a nice level firm tamp. We like to use this two hand technique while looking directly down at the portafilter. So that way we know that the tamper isn't leaning off to one side. Slide the shower screen into the basket, place the basket on the frame, get your cup and place it on the scales. Now this next step is where you're gonna wanna be quick, especially with lighter roasts, because with every second that passes, that brew chamber is gonna be losing temperature. So get it assembled onto the portafilter basket, fill it up to the top with boiling hot water to avoid any air gaps, place the stem with the pressure gauge on, lower the handle, and now you're ready to pull your shot. Okay, let's pause for a second because here's where things get really exciting with a manual lever machine that gives you complete control over pre-infusion and pressure. And with smart scales like the Akaya Luna, you can even play with flow. It is beyond this point where Uncle Ben's words become very relevant. With great power comes great responsibility. With this much control, it's very easy to mess things up. Trust me, we've pulled many shots that tasted straight up like battery acid before things started getting better. So in order to help you avoid a lot of rage and frustration and wasted coffee, we'll show you a solid foundational pressure profile to build off of. Today, we're gonna to be doing a steady, gentle ramp up to pressure and then hold. And then as we're reaching the end of our shot, we're gonna do a partial ramp down. Now this takes a bit of practice because a big part of getting this right is feel. Getting used to lever resistance at different pressures is key to pulling great shots and also quickly course correcting when something feels off. Okay, back to the shot. Start by lowering the lever until you hit some resistance. Continue steadily while keeping an eye on the mirror until the entire basket wells up with coffee and starts dripping. At this point, steadily ramp up to seven to eight bars of pressure and hold. This should all have taken you around 10 to 15 seconds. Now, once you're within five grams of your target yield, slowly ramp down to about five or six bars to complete your shot. Now, this will vary depending on the size of your portafilter basket. With a 45.5 mm basket that we're using today, a shot like this typically takes 45 to 55 seconds to complete. If you're using a wider basket, you can expect this time to go down. Just remember, no matter how precisely you hit these numbers, Always let your taste dictate when you're perfectly dialed in. So obviously what we just showed you is when you're perfectly dialed in. But what do you do when things go awry? Yes, with a machine like this that is fully manual, you can actually do something when a shot isn't going as planned. So here are three common scenarios that you could run into and how to course correct when you do. You press the lever down and you don't feel enough resistance. Coffee is already welled up in the basket and starts to drip. Now, how much resistance you should be feeling, again, comes with practice. At this point, slam the lever down so you're hitting around seven, eight, nine bars of pressure. This should hopefully help compact the puck enough for you to be able to hold this pressure and finish out the shot as you would if you were dialed in. Now, this won't work if your grind size is way too coarse, but if you're slightly off, you can save or even pull a really good shot if you react quickly enough. Then, with subsequent shots, go finer and finer until you're perfectly dialed in. In this next scenario, you press the lever down and immediately notice that there's a bit too much resistance and you're not seeing any coffee in the portafilter basket. At this point, you slow down or even stop at a very low pressure around one or two bars and wait for the coffee to form on the portafilter basket and to start to drip. Once it starts dripping, ramp up slowly and steadily to seven or eight bars until you're getting good flow and then finish out the shot as you would if you were dialed in. And obviously for subsequent shots, go coarser and coarser until you're perfectly dialed in. 
Now this last scenario is where it feels like you're perfectly dialed in and your shot is running smoothly, but you suddenly start to see jets of espresso spray out of your portafilter basket. And this is due to channeling. What you can do here is immediately back off the pressure ever so slightly and then get back on. And if you do this a couple of times, you can try and heal the channel. Water will always find the path of least resistance. So if you have poor puck prep, you're gonna have an unevenly compacted bed of coffee, which gives rise to lower density areas and water will flow through there creating a channel. And all of the coffee that is around that channel will be over extracted and the rest of your coffee will be under extracted. And this will result in a bad tasting espresso, which is unevenly extracted. The best way to solve this is to go back to your WDT and practice that and practice delivering a level even tamp. Well, that's it for now. We hope this was helpful and gives you a good starting point to enter the crazy world of espresso. From this point, you could dive deeper into pressure profiling, dabble with flow, try long pre-infusions, bloom your espresso, and honestly, I could keep going. So now we'd like to hear from you in the comments below. Did you try this technique? How did it go? And would you like to see more espresso related content on this channel? And as always, thank you so much for watching and brew aramse.